So in this video, we are going to be deriving the antiderivative of the function f of x is equal to cosine squared of x. All right, so this video is going to be very similar to my derivation of the antiderivative or indefinite integral of the function f of x is equal to sine squared of x, but I thought that it would be helpful nonetheless. So what we're trying to find is the antiderivative capital F of x which is going to be equal to the indefinite integral antiderivative of the function cosine squared of x with respect to x, so times dx. So how can we solve this? Because we are not familiar with cosine squared of x in terms of a derivative, but we are familiar with, familiar with some trigonometric identities that might make this a little bit more obvious. So we know from trigonometry that cosine squared of x cosine squared of x is going to be equal to 1 plus the cosine of 2x divided by 2, right? So we can plug that in. And if you're not familiar with this, then you should go check out, check out some trigonometry videos. I'll probably have a, dem a demonstration of that there, but I'm not going to derive this right now for the purposes of this video. All right. So let's go back to our original function. We can plug this in for cosine squared of x. So we're going to have our antiderivative equal to the integral of 1 plus the cosine of 2x divided by 2 with respect to x. All right, great. We can simplify this a little bit. We can pull out 1 half. That's going to be equal to 1 half times the integral of 1 plus the cosine of 2x. Great with respect to x. Now we can break this down into two separate antiderivatives or indefinite integrals and that's going to be 1 half times the integral of 1 with respect to x plus the integral of the cosine of 2x with respect to x. Uh, let's close the brackets. All right. So we know the integral of 1 with respect to x, and we're going to add constants at the end, so don't worry about that for now, is going to be 1 half times, this is just going to be x, right? Just the integral of 1 with respect to x is going to be x. All right, plus the integral of cosine of 2x, which we don't know yet. We haven't solved that yet. Now how can we solve that? Because cosine of 2x is still kind of unfamiliar, right? because we know the integral of cosine of x, or the indefinite integral of cosine of x. That's going to be sine of x, and I'm, going to, I'm actually going to pull that up. So we know that the derivative with respect to x of sine of x is equal to cosine of x, and therefore the antiderivative of cosine of x is going to be equal to sine of x. That's how the antiderivative, or indefinite integral works. All right, but that's not what we have here. So what could possibly get that 2x in? Well, what if we took the derivative with respect to x of sine of 2x? What can that do? Now remember the chain rule. So we're going to be take the derivative of the function sine with respect to that inner function 2x. So we're going to pretend 2x is its own variable. So that's going to be sine, and then we're going to plug back I mean, that's going to be cosine, right? Just like we had up here, sine of x is equal to cosine of x. So we're going to have cosine of 2x. It's just a chain rule. And then we multiply that times the, and I'm going to separate this by a wall. All right, so that's going to be cosine of 2x, but we also have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function with respect to x, which is 2. All right, so we have that the derivative of sine of 2x is going to be 2 cosine of 2x. Now, how do we get rid of that 2? Well, let's go back and change our function again. What if we have the derivative with respect to x of sine of, x, sine of 2x over 2, right? Now, that should be the same as the derivative of sine of 2x, except that we pull this 2 out and it becomes a coefficient of 1 half. So that should be 2 cosine 
of 2x times 1 half or divided by 2, right? And the 2s, let's, I'm going to pull that up and make the screen larger for some reason. Yeah, let's just adjust that. All right, these 2s are going to cancel out. So we're going to be left with, and I'm going to switch back again, that the derivative with respect to x of sine of 2x divided by 2 is equal to cosine of 2x. And therefore, we have found the antiderivative of or indefinite integral of the function cosine of 2x. Right? Because if the derivative of sine of 2x divided by 2 is cosine of 2x, then the antiderivative of cosine of 2x is equal to sine of 2x over 2. We can write that like this. Integral of cosine of 2x is equal to sine of 2x divided by 2 and plus a constant. But we're not going to worry about that for now because we're going to add that in at the end. So let's pull back what we have over here. So now we have, what are we left with? And I'm actually, I'm using kind of a more yellowy color. So we're going to have one half, again, weird two there, times x plus, well, what did we find out was antiderivative of cosine of 2x with respect to x? Well, we figured out that that was sine of 2x divided by 2. All right, and this is going to be the end of our derivation. This is going to be x over 2 plus sine of 2x over 2 over 4, over 4 actually, because these 2s are multiplying by each other. And we're going to lastly add a constant as we do with any indefinite integral because the derivative will get rid of that constant to reveal cosine of 2x, which you can, I mean, cosine squared of x, which you can verify on your own. If you take the derivative of this, it should be cosine squared of x. This is the antiderivative of cosine squared of x, or the indefinite integral. I hope you enjoyed this quick derivation. Thanks for watching.